beautiful day at Alhambra Golf Club as we continue our Middle Eastern swing here in this new destination for the DP World Tour. It's the Ras Al Heimer Classic. Here's a man who's finished second on this course, Adrian Moronk of Poland, albeit in the Challenge Tour event that Soderberg won back in 2017. He had a fine week, didn't he, in Dubai, and that's a cracking shot from Moronk. Stone at the fifth. His second shot. Play that nicely. That should move around a little bit right to left from there. Oh, beautiful stuff. Nice eagle there. That helps. Three under for the last three holes. And he moves to minus three, the South African. That's also a magnificent shot. Look at that. He may just have snuck it inside D tree there. What are they hit from here, Rob? This morning I hit seven iron, um, but it looks like it's more into, so probably six irons. Um, and it's firming up a little bit. Ball on the upslope. Oh, it's just incredible. On the upslope, that awkward 35-yard length, the hardest shot in golf. So, up and down, and get himself a little share of that. Oh, that's super. That really is. Landed it all the way, struck it perfectly, got the check. should maybe come off off the camber. Cut this one into the breeze. I like this. Oh, oh dear. That is so unlucky. McIntyre. He did get it running at the hole and he does make his birdie. So second birdie today for the Scot. He moves it to eight under for off the lead. Here's Cantor over the back of seven. That's hit the pin. Yeah, oh, well it did better than that. Hold it. Excellent yeah. stuff from Cantor. Fourth birdie of the day. Three under today, six <laughs> under in total. Right, David Law from the fluffy stuff. We just saw Laurie Cantor pitch in from over the back it's it's the place to be obviously mr green there it's a guaranteed birdie that's three in a row for law who moves to five under par how tong lee nice to see him playing well again richard it is uh he's had a couple of um sort of years in the in the wilderness really um you know he's such a he's such a good player uh, such a strong player as well and it's I, I, I don't know. Oh, there you go. That will help. Yeah, I don't really know what kind of path he's gone down. At the 13th, remember, he laid up. I say laid up. It is a short par four. Yeah, that's great course management, isn't it? Scotland's Craig Howie here at the 18th. Third shot's par five. This seven under is going along nicely. Go on, there around you come. Stay there. Land coming towards the turn. Eighth holes of par five. Third shot on its way. Been quite well on. Look at this, he's unreal. Oh, that's just making me jealous. <laughs> What 
a shot. Oh, my goodness me. He's on the waist area, and he's played it like a long bunker shot. With a bogey free 65, also at 13 under. But here's the man out in front. What a start today from Ryan Fox. He took a three-shot lead into day three. That was almost an eagle at the second. To finish with a birdie. Right to left, swing of this one. Has he hit it? He's got it right in the middle. Brilliant finish for Scott Jamieson. 13 under. Home in 32. 65 for him today. Tricky one, this, actually. Bunker's the same level as the green. It always used to bother me. And the Lombard's still grabbing hold of his wrist. I don't think that impressed him too much hitting that palm tree. We'll keep an eye on that. That's just awesome from Pablo. Tough hold is 12th for the last two weeks, Brandon. Oh, absolutely brutal. Um, it's kind of weird how the course has played this week. Oh, he's stolen a birdie. Oh, how good is that? And I had to the 12th. He's just burned in the last hole, Ross Fisher. This for another one. And finding it. Back-to-back -back birdies in this hard stretch. That moves him up to tied third now. A good look at a two. Just a fraction up the hill at the death, really. It will slow down. Steady golf so far. There's nothing to, to worry him. Oh, oh that, that, now, that the, now there is. Uh, uh, that. Oh, I can't believe that. Wind out of his right, so I might just try and cut across this a little bit. Try and get it popping against it. And now he's left himself quite a lot to do again. Oh, really hard. Fox for his first birdie today. And, you know, every time he's made a bogey this week, every single yep. time, he's followed it with a birdie. Into the back nine now, Robert McIntyre's just dropped a shot on the last hole. This is his second shot to the 10th. Yeah, that's a good shot. Oh, it's drifting. If he can punch this anywhere on the green, it's a good shot. Oh, that's a magnificent golf shot. That really is. Now, that will settle him down. That's his best shot of the day. Getting through before he can maybe breathe a little bit easier at the short par 4, 13th, the par 5, 14th. It's 2.11 we go, and Marcel Seam. Outside chance here for a two. Needs to hit the hole. Oh, it has. It's found the bottom of the hole. Get in there, you beauty. He'll love that one. I'm going to say, he was fist-pumping the, the par at 10. Gareth Arbor, see whether he can follow Marcel Seam in. Not far off. Oh, he has done. Brilliant stuff to 17 under, two behind. Needs to get this one. A bit of spin on it if he can. There you go. Oh, that's just, that's so unlucky. That hit almost dead centre. He did get that little bit of check on the second bounce. Landed it just in the fringe. A little bit more back on track. He got to the turn in 33 and then he doubled the tenth. So he's got one back now. He's thinking about holding them all the time. You can see the rehearsal. He's picking a spot. He's visualising it running in. He's seeing the break. It's all about his pace here and feel. 44 feet of perfection. How about that? 44 feet of absolute joy right now. 
can almost give him that one. 18th and the third of Lombard. Trying to run it down to the flag out of that bunker, and he's done a good job. Very good job. It's a nice, lovely feeling as well when you just have to knock a six inch putt in on the 72nd hole for a birdie. Yeah, decent line, plenty of green to work with. He's thinking about chipping this, and I can assure you. Green tilts away from him to start with and then level at the flag. If he's reading it like a putt, it breaks gently from right to left at the end. Guy, guy. Oh, good try. It's only a par, though. He's battling hard, isn't he? He's really grinding out there. And he's a player that makes the most of his talents, Pablo. One thing I will say, it will release. 10 out of 10, whether it goes in or not. There's the mud on the ball that Anthony mentioned. And under pressure. How was he lacking a bit of confidence? Oh. Oh, what do we know? Look at that. He's just pounded it through. I, I just can't see that. I mean, that's a man with just no confidence at all. If that was a decent lie, I, I've never seen that choice of shot. Trust your hands. And yeah, good stroke. Yeah. Good stroke, yeah. she wasn't it? Yeah, the excellent end. stroke. Yeah, they're all, they're all big money putts. They all adds up at the end of the year. You never know what it'll, what it'll get you into. And... He won't know what's going on behind, but a birdie to hit for him, and he likes this. He likes it. Right into the heart of the green. That's two sensational shots from Ross Fisher. It is, unfortunately, McIntyre, who's playing with, found the water off the tee. Yeah, there's out of bounds, buggy paths down there. 135 for Ryan Fox from the perfect spot. Yeah, good shot. Didn't take the flag on, just straight in the middle of the green. And he's got one. This would steal second place. Keep going, keep going. Now that's shorter than it looks. From still about, what, seven or eight feet for his birdie. Yeah, fist pump. Great putt. That might be the part that gets him second place on his own. Beauty. Fabulous. Way to end the day. It's another big tee shot. Perfect position. He can reach from there. And it has been a masterclass in composure from Ryan Fox. Lots of green to work with, so options available to him in terms of how he plays it. Needs a birdie to get into a tie for second, and he knows it. Big board right behind him that tells him so. It was a real bonus be be between the two bunkers there. Made it a lot easier, and he hasn't really capitalised on that. Well, as Richard said, and Tim as well, very unlikely to hold from 70 feet. But he's got the pace and the line. Oh, what an effort from Adrian Aus. <laughs> so close to that moment of magic. This for Birdie, down the hill after a good approach shot from 123. The, oh, yes, well done, Marcel. And just like Arnaus, hasn't been his best ball striking day, but that nudges him inside the top ten. There you go. Fantastic. He'll be mighty relieved now that he wasn't looking like that at the very beginning, especially when he missed that short part of the ball. 
no. Earlier in the week, it served him well, and now to finish with a flourish. That'll do. And closes out the tournament with a birdie at the last. Fox has gone wire to wire in Rasselheimer and has secured his second DP World Tour victory. And that will feel so sweet. Brian, congratulations. You've done it. You are the 2022 Raz Alkheimer Classic champion. Just describe to us your emotions. It was quite a roller coaster out there. Yeah, uh, probably relief is the is the main one. Um, obviously, it was a bit of a struggle today. Um, sleeping on a six-shot lead, I did not sleep very well last night, and obviously a couple of guys came at me early, and um, yeah, I was a bit bit nervous. I had that awful feeling in the pit of my stomach all day, but. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with how I played. A couple of great shots coming down the stretch. Um, and yeah, it was it was certainly nice walking up the last with my putter in hand and knowing I had five or six putts or whatever it was for it. That uh, six shot lead turned into a two shot gap. And in your head, it's the first time you've held that third round lead in the DP World Tour event. What did you learn about yourself you know, in that final round today? Um, that I'm probably pretty resilient. I mean, obviously there was some bad stuff in there, but um, I just kept plugging away. A um, couple of big momentum putts on the back nine, the one on 10 for par, and then the one on 12 for birdie just kind of kick-started everything and felt like I played pretty solid the rest of the way in, to be honest. And um, yeah, it was going south pretty quickly there and I'm yeah, pretty happy I, uh, I could turn it around and um, you know, show quite a bit of mental fortitude there. A few close calls, that second shot on 10 was quite a gamble wasn't it and even that tee shot on 12 which you converted it into a birdie for you what was a real turning point uh probably the one on 12 to be honest um i haven't been a massive fan of that tee shot for the two weeks and i got away with one there obviously i wasn't aiming there i pushed it a little bit but at least i had it solid and um thought i had a decent second shot just didn't get any the breeze didn't really move it left and um thankfully the hole got in the way with my putt to be honest i probably had three or four feet coming back but um looked good the whole way and this that sort of changed everything that gave me a bit more of a buffer and obviously you know 13 and 14 you feel like are a couple of birdie holes coming home and um, managed to birdie 13 and that kind of made it a little easier coming down the stretch but still not not that easy your 14 month old was crawling before you left home and now she's already walking just going down that final stretch I, you couldn't really stand still on that green you're yeah i could almost see that there's I, a lot going through your mind was the family kind of in the forefront of your mind at that point yeah i just I've just got nervous energy. My old man's exactly the same. He paces around on the phone, and I, I think I probably walked 25 kilometres today. How many, how much I paced around the greens? That's just me. And um, yeah, I was definitely thinking about the family coming down the last couple of holes. It, um, you know, it's pretty big for them. Um, you know, they've got to come over to Europe every year, um, and it's obviously a little bit harder with a little one now. And um, you know, this one makes that a little bit easier for them to do that. And um, I'm a bit disappointed I missed her walking and. Um, I've got 10 days in a hotel when I get home to, to think about that as well and um, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing them when I get out late February. How much better is it going to feel though, 10 days in quarantine but with that trophy in the corner of the room? Yeah, I, the first <laughs> couple of days I might have a pretty sore head but after that I think it'll feel pretty good. Well Ryan, all the players speak so highly of you and we always appreciate your honest insight so thank you so much and congratulations on your second DP Tour win. Thanks Nancy, I appreciate thank it. You, Ryan. watching another DP World Tour video, click here, and to subscribe, click here.